Hi, in this tutorial I will give an overview of OPC and I will provide uh, lots of uh, practical examples where I use different OPC software, different OPC servers, both OPC DA and OPC UA and I will use different uh, OPC clients I, uh, and I will also create or show uh, how you can uh, create OPC clients in different programming languages like LabVIEW MATLAB and Visual Studio. So here you see the overview of uh, this tutorial. So I will start with a short introduction to OPC. Then I will uh, dig into OPC DA. Then I will show some different OPC DA servers that you can use for test and uh, development purposes. Then I will show how you can communicate with those um, OPC DA servers using different programming languages and uh, different tools. So I will start with LabVIEW, MATLAB and then also show how you can use uh, Visual Studio with a package called Measurement Studio. Then next we go to OPC UA. Then I will give an overview of different OPC UA demos uh, or test software, different OPC um, UA uh, servers and clients that you can use for test and, uh, and development purposes. Then I will provide some uh, examples where I show some OPC UA clients made with uh, LabVIEW, MATLAB and Visual Studio. So let's start. What is OPC? Basically OPC is a standard that you can use in order to communicate and send data between different devices from different manufacturers in a network. Typically OPC requires an OPC server that can communicate with one or more OPC clients. Uh, by using OPC it should be straightforward to use um, different devices from different uh, manufacturers because if those devices and or the software are using the same OPC standard, they should be able to communicate with, it, with each other and send data between the different devices. We have also different OPC standards. Um, we have something called OPC DA, which are used to send what we call a real-time data between different devices, between different uh, OPC uh, DA clients and an OPC DA server. We have also an uh, OPC standard that can uh, store historical data. This is referred to as OPC HDA. We have also OPC standards that handles alarms and events, etc. So basically, we need an OPC server that are uh, the data storage, and then we have one or more OPC clients that can communicate with that OPC server either locally on the same computer or in a network or over internet. And those OPC clients can typically retrieve data from um, different types of sensors. It could be PLCs or other devices. And those uh, devices need to send typically or write data to the OPC server. And then we could have other clients that are reading the same data. So here we see a typical OPC scenario or a typical OPC network where we have different devices, different computers, different servers, different clients. So here we have a PLC or a control system that are controlling a process and then we have different actuators and sensors. And typically we need to store the data from the different sensors in uh, into a server. So then we have this OPC server. So the data from the PLC will then be sent to the OPC server. So basically this will be an OPC uh, client. And then we could have different OPC clients uh, in the network where those either read data from the OPC server or they could write the data to the OPC server. So these protocols, these OPC protocols that I was mentioning, OPC DA for direct access, OPC historical data access and OPC alarm and events are referred to as classic OPC. Those protocols have existed for many, many years. 
but uh, now a new or a next generation OPC specification has taken over and this is referred to as OPC uh, UA. Basically OPC UA is a combination of both OPC DA and OPC historical data access and OPC alarm and events. In addition, it also makes it easier to send data over a network or over internet because this new or next generation OPC standard doesn't use the old CUM or DCUM standard. Uh, and now also uh, in the classic OPC um, we had to deal with um, uh, Windows and the Windows operating system because they was relying on this COM and DCOM standard while the next generation can um, be implemented in any, in any kind of uh, devices it doesn't have to be a Windows computer it could be a Linux device it could be a Mac computer it could be a Raspberry Pi uh, Arduino device, whatever so basically the new OPC UA standard are combining those three specifications from the OPC Classic into one new uh, protocol that are cross-platform where you can use it on Windows, Linux, Mac, embedded systems, etc. And since uh, this OPC UA doesn't rely on this old COM or DCOM uh, protocol that is uh, part of Windows it makes it easier to communicate with the server from different clients over a network and even over internet. So let's summarize. OPC UA is the next generation OPC. It stands for Unified Architecture. It's cross-platform, while classic OPC works only for Windows. And it OPC UA is based on modern software network architecture and it doesn't rely on CUM and DCOM, uh, um, the CUM and DCOM uh, protocol. And uh, since it doesn't rely on this old technology, it makes it easier to transmit and receive data in a modern network and over internet. So basically, while the classic OPC was relying on uh, COM and DCOM and Windows, um, all servers and clients need to be a Windows uh, computer, while for the new OPC UA, the different devices in the network can be different types of devices, they can have different operating systems. So here we see an OPC UA server, which is an embedded system, typically running on Linux, then we could have different OPC clients. It could be an embedded system, it could be an ordinary computer with Windows, Linux, Mac OS and it could be some kind of an embedded system uh, from different types of uh, vendors. So then let's start with OPC DA. So then we will um, go through some OPC DA servers that can be used for demo and test purposes. So uh, there exist hundreds of different OPC DA servers that you can use but those mentioned here are good to use for demo and test purposes and they can be used for free uh, within a limited time. So then we have uh, an OPC DA server called Matricon OPC Simulation Server by Matricon. We have an OPC DA server called OPC Server Simulators by Integration Objects. And then we have uh, an OPC DA server called NI OPC servers by NI or previously known as National Instruments. So then let's start with the Matricon OPC simulation server. So here you see uh, the Matricon OPC Explorer, which is part of the package. So uh, when you install this package from Matricon, the Matricon OPC simulation server, you get a uh, OPC DA server and you also get this OPC client which is called Matricon OPC Explorer which you can use in order to communicate with the server, test that the communication is working and see if you are able to read and write data uh, from and to the OPC DA server. 
So in order to install and use this software, just uh, Google Mat Matricon OPC Simulation Server, and then you will find a download link which you can where you can download the software and install the software, or just go to this link in the bottom of this uh, uh, this page. So that's the Matricon OPC Simulation Server. We will use it later in the practical demos. Next, I will just go through the OPC Server Simulators by Integration Objects. So these uh, OPC server simulators by integration objects are free OPC server that you can use for test and demo purposes. And you can use it when you develop um, different types of application that where you need to communicate with an OPC um, DA server. So this package uh, offers both OPC DA and OPC historical data access. And it also has OPC, alarm and events. So just uh, Google OPC server simulators in order to download and install the software or just go to this link in order to, to start using it. Basically here you see um, um, the OPC server simulators. It's a basic user interface. So when you start the server, these windows pop up showing that the server are running and also you get this me message you are running a demo version of integration objects OPC uh, server toolkit and it says you can use it for 48 hours uh, then you need to restart the server and then you can for instance use the Matricon OPC Explorer which is part of uh, the Matricon software in order to communicate with this uh, OPC uh, DA server. The third and last OPC DA server I will mention is the is this NI OPC servers from NI or previously known as National Instruments. So a demo version of this software can is either included in the LabVIEW DSC module or the LabVIEW real-time module but you can also download it separately. Just go to this link or just Google it and then you will go to the download page where you can download these NI OPC uh, servers from NI or previously known as National Instruments. So then let's start with some uh, programming tools or programming languages that we can use in order to communicate with an OPC uh, DA server. Of course, uh, uh, you can use any kind of programming languages, but in this uh, tutorial I will focus on those mentioned here. So then, um, in the first example, we will use LabVIEW in combination with the data socket uh, feature, which is part of uh, LabVIEW. Next, I will use uh, the MATLAB uh, programming environment and the industrial communication toolbox. This uh, toolbox supports both OPC DA and UA while this uh, data socket feature only support OPC uh, DA. And then we can also use Visual Studio. Uh, Visual Studio doesn't have any built-in feature for communicating with an OPC server, but there exist uh, different types of um, add-on packages that you can either download for free or buy. And one of those packages are uh, Measurement Studio, the Measurement Studio package makes it possible to communicate with OPC DA uh, servers from Visual Studio and C Sharp. The Measurement uh, Studio package is made by NI or previously known as um, National Instruments, the same vendor as uh, LabVIEW. Then let's start with LabVIEW and the data socket uh, feature. So here you see the data socket palette, which is part of the LabVIEW uh, programming environment. It makes it possible to communicate with an OPC DA server using the LabVIEW programming environment. Uh, so here you see a um, basic example in LabVIEW where I write data to an OPC server. So this is the uh, graphical user interface or the front panel as it's called in the LabVIEW programming environment. So basically we have the URL to the OPC DA server and the OPC tag and then you have just a numeric co uh, control here where you can uh, specify a value which will be written to the uh, OPC DA server. So here you see the 
code or the block diagram. Uh, basically, you start by selecting uh, the URL to the server and the tag I uh, item. Then you use the data socket open, specify if you are going to write or read data from the server. Then inside a while loop, you can um, read new data to the uh, OPC DA server at specific intervals. In this case, every thousand milliseconds. If you click on the stop button here, you will go out of the while loop and the program will stop and the communication with the data socket and the OPC DA server will be closed. So basically, this is a basic example for writing data or sending data to an OPC DA server using LabVIEW and the data socket feature. Here you see the same um, feature used for reading data from the same OPC DA server. So here you see the block diagram or the code. You do, uh, in the same here, you open a connection to the server, specifying the name of the server and the OPC item. And inside a while loop, you read uh, data from the server as specific intervals, in this case, 100,000 uh, milliseconds. And the values are put into this um, numeric um, text box. And then, when you click on the stop button, the while loop will stop and the application will stop and the communication will be with the server will be closed. So let's go to uh, LabVIEW and see uh, these examples in, uh, in, uh, in action. So now I have opened these two LabVIEW applications. Here is the application that are writing data to the OPC uh, DA server. And here you see the code and this application are reading uh, values from the same OPC DA server and here you see the code for that application. So basically now I'm going to run these two applications in parallel and then when I write 22 here I should be able to read 22 here or if I specify another value here I should be able to read the same value here. And the data are then sent to an OPC DA server and read back from the same server. So in this example, I will use this Matricon um, OPC uh, simulation server. And then I will use this Matricon OPC Explorer application, which is uh, basically an OPC uh, DA client that comes with the server that you can use in order to test and make sure that the communication between the server and the different clients works as expected. And then when I open the Matricon OPC Explorer, I will get a list of available OPC DA servers here to the left. And then you see we have this Matricon OPC simulation server there. So first I need to connect to the server. Then next add the tags. Then uh, this window will pop up where I can see the available tags that are part of this Matricon OPC simulation server. So typically, uh, I use this bucket brigade uh, items because these items can be both written to and read from, while these random items, etc., are only read only. So then I will use this bucket brigade, and for this uh, demo, I will just use this real form. So then I just double click on it, and then it comes here to the left, uh, sorry, in this uh, right window, and then I can click OK. And then it will show up here in this uh, window where I will see the value, the quality, timestamp, etc. of this specific OPC tag or OPC item that I have selected here. This bucket brigade real for. So then I will use the same item in my lab application. So then I just start the write application. And this window pops up where I need to select an URL and an OPC tag. So then I select the Matricon OPC simulation server. I go to um, simulation items and find the same bucket brigade and this real for tag. I just select it and then I see the entire URL here and click OK. And also the entire URL has been copied to this indicator. And then I <coughs> I can specify a value, let's say 25, and then let's go back to the Matchcon OPC Explorer. Then you see 
the value now has been written to the server and the value says here uh, 25. And then I can open the read application, click this run button, select the same server and the same tag, the bucket brigade, uh, read for, click OK, and then you see the same value has been written here. So then let's change it to 26, and then you see the read application is updating the value, and also in the Matricon OPC Explorer we see also the value has been updated. So basically, this is a simple demo where we can use um, LabVIEW and the data socket features in order to communicate with an OPC DA server. So this Matricon, um, sorry, this um, data socket feature in LabVIEW you find here on on the block diagram. You just right click, select data communication. And then you have this data communication palette. Here you find all functions for communicating with different uh, types of standards. And then we have this data socket. And here you have the data socket read, data socket write, data socket open, data socket close. And this uh, feature where you can select a specific tag uh, that are located on the server. So all these uh, functions have been used in these two applications. Next, let's see how we can use the MATLAB uh, programming environment and the industrial communication toolbox. So uh, in order to use OPC uh, with MATLAB, you can use this industrial communication toolbox. Um, both MATLAB and the industrial communication toolbox are made by MATWORKS. And this industrial communication toolbox supports uh, the following protocols. It supports OPC, which is the focus in this tutorial. And you can use the industrial communication toolbox both for OPC DA, which we will focus on now, and also OPC UA, which I will show later in this tutorial. And the previous name on this, on this toolbox was called OPC toolbox. But now, since we can use this industrial communication toolbox for both OPC, MQTT and Modbus, uh, basically they have um, provided support for different industrial uh, communication protocols in one package uh, compared to previously, where they have different toolboxes for OPC, etc. Now they have put everything into one package called industrial communication toolbox. So this communication, uh, industrial communication toolbox is uh, quite new. It's part of MATLAB R2022A 20, and newer version of uh, MATLAB. In order to uh, read more about this uh, industrial communication toolbox, you can go to the uh, web page of MATWORKS. So go to the MATWORKS web page or go directly to this page in order to read more about this industrial communication toolbox. But we will provide some uh, basic examples. Um, here you see a basic example in uh, MATLAB and the industrial communication uh, toolbox, where you first uh, connect to an OPC DA server, in this case the same OPC server that we used in the previous LabVIEW example, this Matricon OPC simulation server. Then you just need to create a group, so I just call it demo group, you can call it whatever you like. Then I use this browse namespace, which makes this window pop-ups, it's similar to the pop-up that we show, uh, that we was seeing in the lab examples. Basically you select uh, the OPC DA server and the proper OPC tag or OPC item put it in the list to the right and then click OK. Then you can use uh, this read function in uh, this toolbox in order to read the data from the OPC uh, server and then you can um, easily improve this basic example with a while loop for loop and then retrieve multiple data from the server and then you can plot the values, uh, do some analysis find the mean, standard deviation, whatever. So basically that's the, the good thing about uh, MATLAB. It's, 
a great tool for plotting, doing some analysis, etc. So basically, uh, in this um, industrial um, communication toolbox, you can both read and write from OPC servers, but typically you will use MATLAB for both only reading. Uh, so then you will typically read lots of data from the OPC server, and then you will plot it, do some uh, analysis, etc. So that's why I'm only showing um, the read example here, but you can easily change it. Instead of the read function, you can use the write function in order to write data to the, to the OPC DA server. But let's go to MATLAB and see this uh, example in action. So in this example or in this demo, we will use the same OPC DA server, this uh, Matricon OPC simulation server. And then here we have this Matricon OPC explorer, which can be used to communicate with the server and use um, and make sure that the communication with the server works as expected. And then I have here this bucket brigade dot real for item where the value is uh, 23. And then let's go to the MATLAB uh, programming environment. And here you see the example I just showed you. So let's just run this example by clicking uh, the run button here. And basically, yeah, say, so here I have used uh, not this bucket real, real for, so let's change it. Bucket brigade dot real for, uh, like this, and then let's just run it now. And now you see the value is uh, 23. Then let's go back to the Matricon OPC Explorer. Then here I can right click. I can write values, so let's write 25 or something, click OK. And now the value on the server is 25, so let's just run this example one more. And then you see the value we are reading here in MATLAB is 25. So here, I, in this example, I have specified the tag name here directly, like this. But we could have also used this browse namespace. And then if I run this example, and this uh, window will pop up here I can specify uh, the tag uh, item so here I just select um, simulated items bucket brigade and this uh, real for put it to the right and click OK and then you see the value is, is the same so basically you can use this one if you don't know the name of the tag but if you know the name of the tag or the item you can just specify it directly uh, like this so this is basically how you communicate with an OPC DA server from MATLAB and this industrial communication toolbox. So in the last part of this uh, OPC DA, um, I will briefly show how you can use this measurement studio in combination with in the Visual Studio and C Sharp in order to communicate with an OPC DA server. Uh, so basically, uh, Measurement Studio is an add-on package to Visual Studio. Uh, while uh, um, Visual Studio and C Sharp is made by Microsoft, uh, the Measurement Studio package is an add-on package made by NI or previously known as National Instruments. So basically, um, the Measurement Studio is the same vendor as the LabVIEW package and both the uh, LabVIEW and the Measurement Studio are using this uh, data socket library or data socket feature in order to communicate with an OPC DA server. So the first thing you need to do is to use the NI Distributed System Manager. So basically this is a tool that is part of the, um, the Measurement Studio and uh, uh, NI software. This is a uh, tool that you use to configure the OPC item that you are going to use in, in the Measurement Studio and the Visual Studio C Sharp application. So when you have set up a proper uh, item here, then you are ready to start uh, creating your, um, your Visual Studio application. So here uh, I see, uh, I show the basic structure of such an application. First, when you have installed this Measurement Studio, you need to in include this using national instruments.network variable, 
which is basically this um, feature, this um, data socket features that you need to use in order to uh, to communicate with an OPC uh, DA server. Then, when the application starts up or in a function, you need to uh, connect to the um, to the OPC DA server. And basically, you need to, uh, to create a network variable reader. And then you need to specify uh, the path or the URL to the OPC tag that where you have set up using this NI distributed system manager, which you have here. So this is the, um, uh, the item name that you're going to use in Visual Studio, which is specified here. Of course, this is just a uh, name. You can specify or create any na uh, name you like uh, by yourself. And then you need to connect um, to the OPC server. And basically, um, you just use this reader and the built-in connect function that is part of Meshman Studio in order to connect to the server. Then next, you can uh, create a simple application like this. Where you have a simple text box, a button. And when I click this button, I will get the latest value from the OPC server here in the text box. And here you basically see the code for doing that. Basically, when you click this get button, you use this um, read data function. And then you just put the value from the OPC server into a variable, in this case, OPC data. And then you just convert it to a text string and put it into this text box. So basically, this is uh, all you need to do in order to, to read uh, data from an OPC DA server using Meshman Studio and Visual Studio. Uh, here you see uh, the same example for writing data. So here you see uh, another application. So instead of getting the, uh, the value, you just write this specific value you, that you specify here to the OPC DA server. So basically, the connection part is the same. But here I have made a write data uh, function or method that are basically do the opposite of this one. You, I just get the value that are entered here, convert it to uh, this um, ordinary um, uh, double um, variable that is specified here, and then just use this built-in write value function that is part of Meshman Studio in order to write the value that are stored in the temperature variable to the OPC DA server. So basically, uh, in order to use the Meshman Studio, you need to set up um, the OPC item using this distributed system manager, and then you need to uh, connect to the server, and then you can either write methods for reading or writing to the OPC DA server. So that's how we use this uh, add-on package called Meshman Studio from NI in combination with Visual Studio and C Sharp programming. So now let's start with the next generation OPC, uh, OPC UA. So uh, let's start with some overview of uh, OPC UA servers. As for OPC U uh, DA servers, we have also hundreds of OPC uh, UA servers that you can use. Uh, in this um, tutorial, I will uh, focus on some uh, OP OPC UA servers that you can use for, um, for uh, test purposes and development. And the first one is um, an um, OPC UA server called OPC UA Server Simulator from Integration Objects. It's an OPC UA demo server, test server, which you can download and use for free. Also, uh, in LabVIEW, you have a toolkit called a LabVIEW OPC UA Toolkit. And with that toolkit, you can create your own OPC UA servers but, and also OPC UA uh, clients. But of course, there are lots of other alternatives uh, that you can use in your applications. So, uh, let's start with an overview of some OPC UA uh, demo or test software that you can use. Um, so we have this um, OPC UA server uh, simulator from integration objects. 
So I will use this uh, demo uh, or a test server um, later when we come to the part where you are creating different um, OPC clients in different programming languages. Then we will use this OPC UA server simulator as our OPC UA server. Also the same uh, company, uh, Integration Objects, also have an OPC UA client that you can use for free in order to test communication with uh, either this OPC UA server simulator or other OPC UA uh, servers. So then let's start with an overview of this OPC UA server simulator from Integration Objects. So here you see uh, the download page. So either just Google it and then you will find uh, the web page where you can download it or just go to this URL which you find in the bottom here. So on the web page you can just click on the download link in order to download this OPC UA server. So here you see it when you have installed it on your computer and when you open it this uh, window pops up uh, indicating that this OPC UA server simulator is running on your computer and also if you click here on the settings you can configure different settings um, for your OPC UA server. Also, you can set up uh, with this OPC UA server simulator, you can set up your own OPC tags. Uh, so part of this software, you will find two different files that you can open and then you can add your own OPC items as part of these uh, files. So the so the main file is called address space.csv, which you find under the location where this um, uh, OPC UA Service Simulator is in installed on your computer. You will find these files and then you can just open them and edit the file, um, which you see here. This is this address space.csv. So here you see uh, the default tag that is part of the um, part of the server when you install it, but then you can easily add more or change the existing one, like this. Next, let's take, uh, take a close look at this OPC UA client, which is also developed by integration objects. Uh, so in order to install it, just go to the web page you find here or just Google it, and then you're able to to install uh, or download and install this um, OPC UA client. So this OPC UA client supports both data access, alarms and uh, events and historical uh, data access. And you can use this tool, which is basically an OPC UA um, client in order to test communication with different OPC UA servers. So here you see the download page for this uh, software. And here you see the actual OPC UA client software, which I have installed on my computer. So basically you just um, click connect in order to connect to an um, OPC server. And then you just type here the, the, the OPC UA server uh, name. And then in the list here, you will find or get access to all the tags that are part of the OPC uh, UA server that you are connected to. So we will use both this um, um, server, this um, OPC UA server simulator and this OPC UA client from integration objects uh, in the demonstrations later in this uh, tutorial. So next I will present the OPC UA programming tools that we will use uh, later in this uh, tutorial. Uh, of course you can use any kind of programming language in order to use OPC UA, but in this tutorial I will focus on uh, the LabVIEW programming environment and the LabVIEW OPC UA toolkit from NI or previously known as National Instruments. I will use Lab, uh, sorry, uh, MATLAB and the Industrial Communication tool, uh, Toolkit and this toolkit supports both OPC DA and OPC UA. In addition I will use Visual Studio and C Sharp and a package called OPC UA.NET SDK. So uh, let's uh, start with uh, sorry, uh, LabVIEW and LabVIEW OPC UA Toolkit. So here you see the um, um, palette that are installed in LabVIEW when you have installed this uh, OPC UA Toolkit. 
You can find information about LabVIEW on the toolkit at the vendor's webpage. And if you want to download this toolkit and test it out, you can find it here on this uh, URL. So basically, with this LabVIEW OPC UA toolkit, here you see the palette that appearing in, uh, in LabVIEW. You can create both OPC UA servers and you can create OPC UA clients. So in this demonstration, I will show uh, three different applications. First, I have made an OPC UA server with this OPC UA toolkit. And then I have made two different OPC UA clients. One uh, application or one client that are writing data to the OPC UA server that has Made, been made here in this application and the third application is an OPC UA client that are reading the same data from the OPC UA server. So here you see um, the OPC UA server and that has been made with this um, LabVIEW OPC UA toolkit. Um, it's quite simple to make an OPC UA server with this toolkit. You just use the built-in um, blocks that are part of the toolkit. So then basically you need to uh, use the create uh, block in order to create the server itself. Then you can add different folders and then you can add different items in, in the different folders. And then when you have done that, set up the OPC UA server, then you need to start the OPC UA server and then just create a while loop uh, that means that the server is running until you click on this stop button and then you actually stop or close uh, the server. So that's the OPC UA server created with the uh, LabVIEW OPC UA toolkit and then we need to create uh, different clients. The first one uh, should be uh, written data to the server. So here you see the um, graphical use interface and here you see the actual block diagram or the code. So first you need to connect to the server and then inside the while loop you just write values um, to the server. So here on the front panel you just specify a numeric control where you just specify a value that should be written to the server. Of course this can be changed um, to reading values from a sensor uh, etc. So basically this is the application for writing values to the server. And the next application is to read values from the server. The use interface is very similar, but instead of entering a value, you just read the value here in this uh, numerical indicator. But the code, as you see here, is almost identical. You start by connecting to the server, and then instead of write, you use this multiple read in order to read one or more values from the OPC UA server. So let's go to LabVIEW and test out these applications. So now I have opened these three applications which are made with LabVIEW and the LabVIEW OPC uh, UA toolkit. So here is the OPC UA server and here is the code which I was showing you earlier. So I create the server itself, add folders, add items and then just run the application. And here is the right client OPC UA uh, client write application that are using this multiple uh, write uh, block. And then I have the OPC UA uh, client read that are using the multiple read block like this. So let's just start by uh, running uh, the server. So now the server is running. And here is the OPC tag or item ID which I have created and then I use the same item uh, ID here and then I specify the name of the server which is this one and here is a value that I'm going to write to the server so then I just click run here now I'm writing 23 the value 23 to the server and then let's see if you are able to read the same value from this read uh, application. So as you see, if I change it to 24, it changes to 24 here. I can change it to 25 and then you see it's updated. So basically, I'm using this application to write to the server and this application that reads 
the same value from the server. And of course, I can use this uh, LabVIEW OPC UA um, toolkit in combination with other OPC UA servers or other OPC UA clients. So here I have this OPC UA client from integration objects. So that I will use this as a third OPC UA client that are con uh, connecting to this OPC UA server. So then I just copy the server address, click on the connect button here, and paste it into this endpoint URL and click apply. And then I know I'm connected to this server and then I will find the same, I go to here now. So the name, and I have created a folder called process data and an item called temperature, which I find here, process data, temperature. And then I can uh, right click and monitor that uh, item, click OK, and then it will pop up here in the list. And you see the value is 25, which is see here. I can change it to 26. It changes here in the read client, and also it changes here in the OPC UA client from integration objects. I can also uh, right click here to write another value here. Let's say 27, click OK. And the value is updated. And it's updated here on the different clients. I can change it to twenty-seven. Click OK. And of course, if I want to write or change the value from this client, of course I need to close this client. So I close this um, client. So no, uh, the value is 26. So let's click here, sorry, here, uh, click right, change it to 27, click OK. And then you see the value has been changed. And then also on the other client here in LabVIEW, you see also the value has been changed to 27. So uh, since we are using the same uh, protocol, OPC UA, we can communicate with different uh, OPC servers and different OPC uh, clients written in different programming languages without any problem. So let's also open this uh, OPC server from integration objects, so OPC um, UA server simulator. So basically now I have two different OPC UA servers and I have one, two, three different clients. And now, um, Let's see if you can use, um, no, I just close this server. And let's see if you are able to use uh, LabVIEW in order to communicate with this OPC uh, US server instead of uh, this one. So then I just copy the URL here into the two uh, OPC UA clients application written in uh, LabVIEW, like this. And then you can also use this client in order to connect to the server. So then I disconnect from here and connect to the other server instead. And like this, apply. And then here we see the available tags on this um, uh, this server. So let's just use one of them. Let's say tag number seven. So then here in those uh, clients made with LabVIEW, I just change the item path, which is the um, OPC tag, to tag seven. And the same here. Tag seven. So now I have um, this OPC UA server which is running here. I'm connected to the server using this client. So then I just uh, right click on tag 7, monitor, and click OK. And then I can just start by changing the value. Let's change it to 20. 
60 or something like this click OK so now this value for tag number 7 is 20 I can run this um, read client and then you see the value 20 that I was writing here in this client is now also popping up here in this OPC uh, UA client read that was written in LabVIEW I can also op start this other one and now the value is written is 26 and then you see it's 26 here and 26 here I can change it to 27 it's updating here and it's updating here so basically uh, now I have used two different OPC um, UA uh, servers this one from integration objects this one I have made from scratch using LabVIEW and the LabVIEW OPC UA toolkit and this one is the OPC UA client from integration objects and I have also made two different OPC UA clients in LabVIEW and the LabVIEW OPC UA toolkit and all these applications are communicating with, uh, with each other and some of the clients are writing to the server while others are writing a reading from the same server so basically if you use the same uh, protocol in this case OPC UA you can use any kind of programming language in order to communicate and send data between the different uh, clients so next let's see how we can use MATLAB and the MATLAB Industrial Communication Toolbox in order to communicate with an OPC UA server so um, this industrial communication toolbox supports both OPC, both OPC DEA and OPC UA and this toolbox was previously known as OPC toolbox but since uh, MATLAB and MATWORKS now have combined different communication protocols into one uh, package namely OPC, MQTT and Mobius uh, so you can communicate with uh, using uh, any of these uh, protocols now using this new uh, toolbox called Industrial Communication Toolbox. So this uh, toolbox um, supports OPC DA, OPC HDI and the new OPC UA. Uh, so here you see a basic example how to communicate with an OPC UA server and read data from that specific server. So basically you um, um, communicate with the server using in this case a local host or an IP address and a port number in order to connect to the server and then you can use browse namespace in order to select one of the items in the OPC uh, US server and then you can use read value in order to read a specific value from the OPC US server so here you see the actual MATLAB code, which I will demonstrate later. And here uh, it's the same uh, example, but instead of using this browse namespace, you can also specify uh, the tag uh, directly like this. And the right example is almost identical. Instead of using um, read value, you use the write value in order to write a specific value to the OPC UA server. And here you see the actual uh, MATLAB code. So let's go to MATLAB and demonstrate these examples. So now I have uh, opened these examples in the MATLAB programming environment. I also have in the background this OPC US Server Simulator, uh, the test and demo OPC US Server from integration objects running. And I also have this uh, OPC UA client from integration objects. So these are running in the back background and here we have this tag 7 which I will use and now the value is uh, 27. So let's go to MATLAB. So here is the right example. So now I am changing the value here to 21.7. Let's just run this example. Clicking the run button. Since I am now using this browse namespace this uh, window will pop up where I can select the specific tag so 
and then I just here under um, real time data select this tag number seven of course I can use another one but I'm using number seven click it here click OK and now let's go to this um, OPC UA client from integration OBEX and you see the value 21.7 has now been written to the server and then I can also use MATLAB in order to read that value so here is a read example I run it I'm using this um, rows namespace and then this will pop up I select the same tag 7 I select it and click OK then if you see here in the command window the value 21.7 has been um, read into the MATLAB programming environment instead of using this rows namespace I can also specify the tag name here directly so if I run this one I will get the value directly without having this uh, pop-up window so basically this is how you use uh, MATLAB and the MATLAB industrial communication um, toolbox in order to communicate with an OPC UA server in this case I'm using this OPC UA server simulator of course I could also use the LabVIEW OPC UA server which I have created uh, since both are using the same protocol this OPC UA so then you can use any kind of server that are supporting that uh, that protocol so uh, finally let's see how we can use Visual Studio and C Sharp in order to communicate with uh, one or more OPC uh, UA servers so in this uh, demonstration I will use this package called OPC UA.NET SDK so this uh, package um, will be used in this tutorial but of course there are existing lots of other packages or libraries that you can use in combination with Visual Studio in order to communicate uh, with an OPC UA uh, server uh, of course most of these packages are you need to pay for them also this package is something you need to pay for but you can use it in uh, demonstration mode or evaluation mode for test and demo purposes uh, if you go uh, just google it or go to this web page then you will be able to download this or get information regarding this um, OPC UA.NET SDK but you don't need to download anything from the web page because uh, when you are going to create applications using Visual Studio you will just use the NuGet package so when you have created your application you just go to the right click on the project and select NuGet packages and then search for OPC UA and then you will find the NuGet package that you are going to use this opc.uafx.client which is this um, opc ua.net sdk from the traeger.da uh, company so basically you need uh, when you are created uh, uh, a basic Windows Forms application in Visual Studio. The next step is to uh, download and install this uh, NuGet package and then you are ready to start creating your application and the next step would be to include this using opc.uafx.client and then you are ready to start uh, creating your uh, applications in Visual Studio that communicates with an OPC UA server. So in this tutorial I will provide the following demonstration. I will use this OPC UA service simulator from integration objects and I will also use this OPC UA client from the same company integration objects and then I will uh, show one application that are writing data to this uh, server and another application that are reading uh, a value from the same OPC UA server. So let's start with the OPC UA write application. It's uh, very basic. It's this application. It's a simple text box and a button. And when I click this uh, write button, I should write the value that I specified here in the text box to the server. So then in the button handler, you start by uh, uh, specifying the OPC URL, which is in this case, 
and just uh, on my local host and the port number which to be found here in the OPC US server you just click on settings and then you will find the port number for this server which is which is the default one is 62640 next you specify the tag name or the OPC item which uh, we use the same tag here uh, tag number 7 and then you just uh, connect to the you, you start by creating a um, client object and then you connect to the server and then you convert this text box to a to a double variable and put uh, to a double value and put it into a in this case a variable called temperature and then you just use the built-in write node um, function in order to write the specific value to the um, OPC um, UA server. And the same for the OPC UA read example is almost identical but instead of using write node you just use read node instead. So let's go to Visual Studio and uh, test these applications. So now I have the server, OPC UA Service Simulator, up and running. I have this um, OPC UA client from the same company, Integration Objects, up and running. And I have these two applications made with Visual Studio. This OPC UA Write, which you find here. So this is the Write application. Here you see the, um, the user interface, a text box and a button, and here you see the corresponding code. All the code has been put in into this um, uh, button handler, where I connect to the server and use this uh, write node in order to write the value that I specify here. So this is the write. Let's just run it. That's the right, and the same for the read. So now I have these two applications made with the uh, Visual Studio, one for write. So then let's just say 22. I click write. And then you see here in this integration objects, value 22 has been written to the server. And this opposite UA read application, I click the read button. And also the same value has been uh, been uh, put into this text box. So basically, uh, it's quite simple to communicate with an um, OPC UA server from Visual Studio if you use this uh, uh, this um, OPC UA.NET SDK um, like this. I have also created two more advanced examples, so let's just run these applications as well. So I have one for writing to the um, OPC uh, UA server and one for reading. I will just run these two applications. And I have the same OPC UA server, of course I can use another OPC UA server. These two applications are a bit more uh, advanced, here I can specify. Uh, the server name um, and, and the port number. I can specify a specific tag and I can uh, start and stop and then the values will be written uh, at specific intervals. In this case just uh, every one, one, uh, one second and then um, instead uh, here I just write um, a dummy data using a random generator of course I can instead get the values from as one or more sensors and the same for this uh, read application here I can specify the URL the item and then I can start and stop uh, reading values from the server and I also get a message from the OPC server here in the bottom so let's just click here to start and now um, when I click start, you see this um, this new uh, 
client has been popped up here in the list on the server so now this server um, or two different OPC clients are now connected to this server namely this one and this one and then also let's start the third one which I have here click start and then you see there are three clients that are connected to the server and now um, this is just random values uh, that are generating from a random generator and then you see the values are updated here on this client and on this client uh, but these examples are a bit more sophisticated and uh, they are using a timer in order to write and read values at specific intervals and then you can also specify um, the server address and, and the OPC item like this so basically that's all so let's summarize this uh, tutorial first we gave an introduction to OPC and in OPC we have the classic uh, OPC which is basically OPC DA and then we went through some examples and some examples of different OPC DA servers that we can use and namely Maticon OPC simulation server we was using OPC server simulators from integration objects and I was also mentioning NI OPC servers from National Instruments then I was providing some uh, examples and demonstrations using different programming uh, tools and languages like LabVIEW and DataSocket, MATLAB and Industrial Communication Toolbox and Visual Studio and C-Sharp and the Meshmet Studio uh, add-on or package from NI which is the same vendor as uh, LabVIEW then we went through uh, OPC EUA in the detail where I was presenting different OPC UA uh, servers that you can use for test and demonstration purposes one was uh, this OPC UA server simulator from integration objects they also provide an OPC UA client which they just call OPC UA client and then I was providing different uh, programming tools and programming languages first we use LabVIEW and the LabVIEW OPC UA toolkit which can be used to create both OPC UA servers and OPC UA clients then we was using MATLAB and the industrial communication toolbox which can be used to communicate with both OPC uh, DA and OPC UA servers finally we was using this OPC UA.NET SDK from Traeger uh, which is a um, package that you can use in combination with Visual Studio and uh, C-Sharp. In this uh, tutorial I was just going through these examples without going into any depth but I have made separate tutorials for all these packages and all these programming languages and the different add-ons and toolboxes and toolkits so just um, go to my uh, YouTube channels and then you will find uh, if you are interested in detailed uh, explanations and tutorials for all these packages so that's all so good luck with your OPC uh, applications thank you and goodbye